Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Now you may notice I'm still with this camera angle, I'm filming this right after I filmed my September life update. I left it too late to film with any natural light today and I've been trying to get a camera angle that works well with the electric lighting I've got in my flat so yeah so we've got a new camera angle today and today I am bringing you my September reading wrap up, that's what I'm doing. It's also quite late here and I yeah, I need to go to bed soon. So <laughs> before I can go to bed though, I have to film this video, which is my September reading wrap up. So I read a total of 10 books in September, which is pretty good. I think I average around eight. So yeah, so slightly above average. That was really helped by the Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon. I read six books for that. You may have seen my reading vlog for that. I just mentioned in that the books that I was reading and sort of vague impressions of them but I didn't really wrap it up so I'm going to include those in this wrap up um, and talk a bit more about those books and what I thought about them. I also DNF'd one book and I'll get to that one first after I've gone through all the stats because it was quite disappointing. So I read 10 books of those, three were ones that I'd borrowed all from the library. Five of them were ones that were new to me this year so either I bought them or Two of them were given to me and I think the other three were ones, yeah, the other three were ones I bought. So three three were non-fiction, seven were fiction and one of those was a book of short stories. I ticked off one more country on my read around the world challenge which was Iceland and my Goodreads total so far for the year is 74 books which means I'm now 16 books ahead of schedule which is, I'm just, I can't quite believe that I'm in this position, I'm actually only four books away from hitting my target for the year, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna hit my target this month. And then all the books after that are a bonus. <laughs> so that's really exciting. I'm not gonna change my goal on Goodreads, but I have sort of a stretch goal in mind in my head. So if I start to get close to that, I might tell you what it is. <laughs> oh, and so I read three books by male authors, six books by female authors and one book was a collaboration. And in terms of ratings, I had one book that I didn't finish so I don't rate those. I had seven four star reads and three five star reads. So other than the one book that I didn't finish, it was actually a really good reading month. I really enjoyed all the books I read apart from that one that I didn't finish. So to the books. So let's start with a bad one. Let's start with the one that I didn't finish. And that was The Gallows Pole by Benjamin Myers. This was our Ninja Book Club pick for August, but no one or a few of us hadn't quite finished it at the end of August, so the chat was postponed into September. I actually gave up around page 100. I was really struggling. I was struggling a bit with the writing style, not because I didn't like the, the style per se, but I'd read a couple of books in a similar style recently that were done better. So I was struggling with that point. There were also certain sections that I didn't like the way they were written. There was a lot of violence, a lot of swearing, a lot of brutality. And so while the subject matter was interesting, it's historical fiction but um, based on real life events about a essentially a money laundering gang in the 17th century, 18th century. Yeah, I just got to a point where I was like, I'm not enjoying this, why am I still forcing myself to read this? And I realised that I, there was no way I was going to finish it by the time of the chat anyway. So I then found out that Becca, who hosts the book club, also gave up around the same point. So the chat was really fun because there were two of us that had not finished it. I'm gonna put the book down because I find out I find that cover really frightening. I really don't like that cover. Yeah, two of us involved in the chat had given up about a third of the way through. Actually I think we both felt from the way the others were talking about it that we were happy with that decision. <laughs> Sometimes life is too short to read books that you're not enjoying. Life is definitely too short. There are too many good books to read once you're not enjoying. So I was disappointed because I buy the books for book club new. Most of my books I don't get new. I either borrow them from the library or I buy them secondhand. So unless I'm really sure I'm going to like a book, I don't generally buy a new a new book. Yeah. So this one I bought new and at nearly full price because I buy them direct from Ninja Book Box. So I'm happy that I have because I like supporting Bex. I like supporting her business, but I'm also a bit annoyed that. I paid so much money for a book that I ended up reading less than a third of but they now have a secondhand bookshop on the Ninja Book Box website so I'm going to um, try and sell my copy back to them. I probably won't get 
all the money back for it but actually it'll be something if I get a little bit of that money back so anyway on to happier things because I don't like talking about books that I don't enjoy so on to my four star reads most of these were ones I read for the Tome Infinity and Beyond readathon so if you want to see which ones I read for that and which challenge they met then go and take a look at my reading vlog for that. So the first book this month that I gave four stars to was I Robot by Isaac Asimov. This was my first experience of reading Asimov. I really enjoyed this. Some of it feels a little bit dated because obviously he was writing this not knowing how the technology was actually going to develop. I found this really fascinating, really enjoyable to see some of the ways that he imagined robots could develop, particularly when they start getting into the ideas of artificial intelligence. And I think that's the conversation that some of the concerns that he raised in this book are still things that we should be concerned about today. I loved getting more familiar with the three laws of robotics and seeing how that still plays a part in science fiction. And I might actually get onto that a little bit more in a minute with one of my other books. So yeah, really enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to reading some more Asimov as well. I have, I think I have all of, all of his well-known books, I think because my dad's given me a load. I think it's most of them, if not all of them. So I'm looking forward to reading more Asimov. My next, my next full star read is one I borrowed from the library and that was Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in the Grisha trilogy and I really enjoyed this book. It feels so long ago now that I read it and I read it really quickly, I zoomed through it. I loved the magic system in it, how there were certain people that had powers and they could do different things and I loved the whole sort of battle of light against darkness and how that developed and I'm really excited to get onto the next one which I'm pretty sure my library has it but I want to make myself return some of the other books I have out from the library before I request it and that was my plan and I then somehow managed to request a load of books not including that one and so I have even more books out from the library at the moment so I do intend to carry on with the series and I will be trying to get hold of the second and third ones from the library sooner rather than later but yeah I need to work through some of my <laughs> other library loans first and the next book I gave four stars to was The Ship by Antonia Honeywell. This was a sort of dystopian novel, fairly apocalyptic. It's set in a future London where society is all but fallen apart due to widespread flooding, due to global warming. I have actually filmed a review of this, mostly spoiler free. I realised as I was filming it that I maybe have put in a spoiler so um, I need to edit that and upload it so that will be going up in the next week or so so keep an eye out for that one. This was a really good book and I've not heard many people talk about it. I just stumbled across it in the library and thought it looked interesting and it was definitely worth reading so if you happen to come across a copy of that I highly recommend it and check out my review of that when it goes up soon. The next four star book I read this month was a very short one. It was Julian of Norwich by Yanina Ramirez. Yanina Ramirez is one of my favourite historians. She does a lot of documentaries on TV in the UK and she just gets so passionate about what she's talking about and she actually made a documentary a couple of years ago about Julian of Norwich and her manuscript and how it survived and this book was published to accompany that show. So I've had this for a couple of years and hadn't got around to reading it and so I was decided to pick it up for as a short book for the readathon and I was really glad I did. I just needed something a little bit different in the middle of a lot of quite serious, quite intense fiction books and this was just a very gentle non-fiction giving a bit of background to who Julian of Norwich might have been because not very much is known about her and how her manuscript survived, how she came to write it, all that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in medieval literature this is a good little insight into that world. Her book Revelations to Divine Love is considered one of the earliest works in English prose and one of the earliest works by a female writer in English. Anyway so this was a good little insight and I'm now reading Revelations of Divine Love. It's going to take me a little while to get through but I'm glad I read this as a bit of a background before I started that. And the next book I gave four stars to in the month of September was And the Wind Sees All by Gudmunda Andri Thorson. So this was my book for Iceland on the Read Around the World Challenge. Uh, it's about a little Icelandic fishing village. The entire story essentially takes place in the space of two minutes. So it follows 
Carter, who is one of the villagers, and she runs a choir, and she's cycling from one end of the village to the other to set up the village hall for a concert that evening. And as she cycles past, she passes different people in the village, and then each chapter takes a different person and tells a little bit of their story of their background. Yeah, it was really beautifully written, and... I really enjoyed reading it and I definitely am going to reread it because I was quite tired when I was reading this so I kept getting some of the characters confused. I want to go back and read it again. It was, yeah, beautiful and heartbreaking in places as well. Really highly recommend, particularly if you want to read more translated literature, translated fiction. If you're interested in reading less well-known European authors, it's the first book by this author to be translated into English. It's um, Perrine, the publisher, specialise in finding little known European authors and translating them into English. So I really high, highly recommend checking out Perrine Press and checking out this book. Right, my next four star book was one of my highly anticipated books of the year and that was Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig. This is a follow up to his book Reasons to Stay Alive and is on a similar theme. So Reasons to Stay Alive was about his experience of anxiety and depression and how he came through that experience. How he came out the other side, how he recovered from that and what he learned from that. Notes on a Nervous Planet tells a little bit more about his experiences of mental illness but also some of the things he thinks affect us as society, as people in the modern world that have led to a rise in mental illness and in people having problems with their mental health and some suggestions for how we can look after ourselves a bit more and be mindful of our mental well-being. His writing is really powerful, his novels are beautiful and his insights into mental illness are really eye-opening, I would say. And if you fo follow him on Twitter at all as well, he's very open about his struggles and about promoting being kinder to each other in society. Every time I move the camera wobbles. <laughs> because it's balanced on my sofa. So, sorry about the dodgy camera work today. So, I actually, I've been reading this all month, just a little bit every night, but in the last week I've been reading it alongside my final four star read of the month, which is an Ninja Book Club pick for September, and that's called Killing Hapless Alley by Anna Volt, I think you say that. So, this book is also about mental health, so it was really interesting reading them alongside each other. So this book is, I want to say, a novelization of the author's own experiences of mental illness. So the central character is Alison, who has grown up with very little affection from her parents, um, actually quite emotionally abusive household. She has developed an alter ego called Hapless Ally, who she has determined as a more acceptable version of herself. So if she feels like she is not being accepted in the situation, she brings out Hapless Ally, and, who is a more exuberant character, and tries to make herself more likeable in that way. But Hapless Ally seems to have developed her own persona, and has started to separate herself from Alison. Alison also has various imaginary friends who are celebrities that she has made into her friends in her mind because she has very few friends in real life and so she has conversations with them. Um, and as the book goes on, her, her relatives also start to be voices in her head. So it's sort of her journey into this sort of mental state and how she copes and doesn't cope and then eventually how she finds treatment and becomes more healthy. So it was a really powerful book. I suppose of my four star books this was the one that was, if we had half stars this would probably have been a three and a half star because of all the four star books I probably enjoyed it the least but not necessarily because of the subject, I found the subject really interesting. Um, I did struggle a little bit with the writing style in this one, it's very much stream of consciousness, it doesn't always feel like it flows very well so she'll be talking about one experience and then we'll suddenly jump to something else and I'm like how did she get there? But I found it really fascinating insight into um, someone's experience of different aspects of mental illness. My favourite part of the book was when Alice, Alison starts to realise she needs help and suddenly all her real life friends that she hasn't even really recognised her there start turning up with cakes and looking after her children and helping her out and she's suddenly aware that there are real people that 
care about her. Um, and I really loved the way the names that she gives the people that she encounters. For for example, her mother, who is not very nice to her, but is really respect respected in the community, is called Santa Maria throughout the book. Another thing that I really appreciate about this book, which I think is something that should be done in all books, but I think particularly because of the subject matter it was done in this book, it has a trigger warning at the front of the book of some of the topics that come up in it so that you go into the book knowing what to expect some brutal culinary episodes i think all books should should have trigger warnings in the front like that so that you are prepared for when it comes up so yeah so this was really interesting if you are interested in mental health this is a really good novel good insight into someone's experiences of mental illness on to my five star books so the first of these i filmed a full review for and that is undivided by vicky beeching so i'm not going to go into too much detail about this one because i have put a full slightly emotional review up for it so if you want to know more about this book go and check it out i'm not going to go into it again now suffice to say i really enjoyed this book found it really powerful really moving and really highly recommend it to anyone that has questions about faith and sexuality and how the two do or don't work together go and check this out for one woman's experience of being gay and being a christian so really do recommend that one my next five star book i read for the tome infinity readathon and that was illumine by amy kaufman and jay christoph i really loved this book i cannot tell you how much i love this book i just thought it was beautifully set out i've never come across another book like it with the way the pages are formatted and the whole concept of it being a compiled report. The story was gripping and it even had sort of space zombies that I could cope with because I hate zombies. But I really enjoyed this. I was totally gripped. I stayed up really late finishing it and um, I've just ordered the second one so that I could carry on the series because I really am dying to know where they go next. I've heard that the other two books follow different characters and different episodes that link into the stuff that happens in this book but I'm just really excited to see where they go next, what they do and what I was saying before about Asimov and his three laws of robotics. I was really glad I read that before I read this because some of the stuff with the AI in this book and how it reacts to different situations really reminded me of one of the stories in particular in iRobot where one of the more developed robots with art artificial intelligence is trying to determine how the three laws of robotics interact and at what point is it better to sacrifice himself to save a human or is it better to not sacrifice himself to save one human if doing so will save many humans and I kind of was thinking of that with some of the stuff with Aiden in here and how he chooses which lives he is going to save for the good of the fleet and whether that was him working properly or not so yeah so I really enjoyed this and my final five star book of the month was one I finished today. I actually finished three of these books today. I was on a bit of a reading sprint today. And that was Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I was reading this as part of the Big Buddy read along and we had the live show this evening, which I very much enjoyed. It's my first time watching a live show and joining in the conversation about this. Yeah, I really, really loved this book so much so that when I had maybe a hundred pages left and I just decided, I borrowed this from the library and I decided I'm gonna wanna reread it. So I ordered a copy of this and I also pre-ordered Muse of Nightmares so that I can read it straight away because at that point I could tell that this book wasn't gonna resolve and that I would want to be reading. <laughs> Muse of Nightmares as soon as possible so I'm very excited to have that on pre-order and it's coming soon. I'm excited to have my own copy as well of Strange the Dreamer coming so I can reread it. Lainey Taylor is just, her writing is beautiful and some people were saying in the in the live show that they found it slowed the pacing of the book but actually I was just so lost in the language that I didn't care about the pacing. I didn't care that the plot was slow in places because I, I love character driven books so there was enough plot to keep me going in here and I just found the characters so interesting and so well rounded even some of the side characters all had backstories you could understand all their motivations really excited to carry on reading Lainey Taylor with Muse of Nightmares I also have Daughter of Smoke and Bone out from the library so yeah really keen to keep going with her books and I think she's going to be a new favourite author for me that may be a bold statement after one book but I really really loved this book it's, uh, it's going to be one of my favourite books of the year I'm sure 
So that was all my books that I read in September. On to what I'm currently reading. So I actually finished three books today. I haven't started anything new but I do have one book that I started a little while ago that I haven't finished yet and that is Shakespeare by Bill Bryson. So this is my priority to read next. I'm going to try and finish this book this week because I started reading it like I think in June and I just keep putting it down and picking up other things. Yeah, so I'm really keen to get going with that one. As to other books that I'm going to try and read this month, my main focus for the month is going to be getting through a lot of my library books. I'm probably going to film a video just about all the books I have out from the library at the moment. That will be coming up in the next couple of weeks, I think. I also want to tackle some of my Death Row books, so again, I think I'm going to make a video about, about that. Um, I might try the do the try a chapter thing for some of my Death Row books, so keep an eye out for that video too that's probably coming up soon other than that for my read around the world challenge I have a book that a friend lent me and um, this is called I Francis by Carlo Coretto Carlo Coretto's Italian this book is about St Francis of Assisi it's it's sort of a reflection on some of St Francis's teachings and his life and so I'm really looking forward to getting, to getting into this one, it's quite a short one. And finally I have my Ninja Book Club pick for October which I'm actually really excited about this book when I saw the cover. I think it's going to be quite steampunk. So this is Emily Nation by Alex McKee and I'm going to read out the blurb to you because it will explain it better than I can. Emily Nation is the toughest assassin in the wastes of Great Britain. When a contract goes south, she puts the west of England in her rearview mirror and doesn't look back until faces from the past come looking for her. With dire consequences threatening everyone she cares about, her powerful sponsor menacing from the shadows, and a vicious enemy growing stronger by the day, Emily must overcome her personal demons to finish the job, whatever the cost. So this sounds like it's a great adventure story. I think it's got some LGBTQIA rep in it. As well I seem to remember from the Goodreads profile but I will let you know about that and yeah I'm really excited to get into this one. So that was my September wrap up and October TBR. Thank you so much for watching, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, let me know what you're planning to read in October and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel, um, it means a lot to me that people are wanting to hear what I have to say and yeah that's it, I will talk to you again soon. Bye.